Hello and welcome to The Wire. I'm Shravasti Das Gupta. Today we are being joined by Sahitya Academy Award winning author K.R. Meera who's bringing to us her new book Assassin. Now this is a, an English translation of her 2022 Malayalam novel which was called Ghatakan and this is the English translation which has been done by J. Devika and um, Meera is here today to talk to us about the book. Thank you so much for joining us Meera on The Wire. Thank you, uh, The Wire and Sarasti. Uh, so just to give our viewers a sense of what the book is about, it uh, follows the story of uh, our protagonist Satyapriya and uh, the book begins by invoking the, the murder of Gauri Lankesh without divulging too much about it. It starts off from that point and then kind of follows uh, Satyapriya's journey to uncover the truth about um, the fatal attempt on her life and whether her family members also suffered similar attempts on their life by an assassin and um, while these events are happening it's happening in the backdrop of demonetization and the whole story kind of uh, follows concurrently with contemporary politics and it's also a co uh, commentary on uh, caste class part and the haves and the have nots in a sense um, so to just start off Meera my first question is that the book invokes Gauri Lankesh at the very beginning and it kind of starts off from there and sets um, uh, sets the stage in a sense with Gauri Lankesh's murder uh, what's different of course is that our protagonist survives the attack and uh, Gauri Lankesh did not so uh, how important was it for you to invoke Gauri Lankesh in this manner and why did you decide to start the narrative in this manner because the novel uh, as an idea uh, started with uh, that incident only so when uh, Gauri Lengesh was assassinated uh, in 2017 um, I was in University of Pennsylvania doing a fellowship there with uh, Cassie uh, the India Study Center there uh, and it, it was such a shock to me because uh, uh, a few months uh, before that, uh, Gauri Langesh had published uh, the translation, Kannada translation of one of my stories, Bhagavan's Death, Bhagavan Maranam in Malayalam, in her Gauri, Gauri Langesh Patrika. And all of a sudden, when you uh, read about such an incident, no, you will be shocked. I was so shocked that uh, from that point, I started uh, thinking about uh, her and me and it was like, um, uh, see, we are all aware of uh, the kind of violence uh, we face every day within our family or within our house. But then uh, or uh, in the uh, in the place where the workplace, uh, but this, this kind of uh, uh, being murdered for a political reason uh, was not so common for a person who was not in power, a woman who is not uh, holding any position of power. No? So from there onwards, I was thinking about myself and herself uh, and like uh, uh, I, I saw myself in her place because um, I too was asking questions about uh, power, uh, raising some, uh, see, we all have doubts about the kind of uh, control the state has over us, uh, we citizens. And uh, we, are, we also uh, look for complete citizenship as women. And so I, I could easily uh, visualize myself in her uh, position. And for a moment, I started thinking about, I, I started uh, uh, retracing my steps backward. And then I thought, okay, this is the time to uh, write about the women of my generation, my life, uh, the women uh, uh, who had lived with me, around me. Uh, and so it happened like that. So everything started from that point. That's why I have uh, so much. That, that, that's why uh, the assassination has to be, had to be there. So it kind of started off from that and of course it expands to something much more. I don't want to divulge anything for our readers because it's a very engrossing read and there are lots of twists and turns. So we should not be revealing anything at this point. But also a very um, interesting theme is demonetization. Uh, just to tell our viewers that the events of the book are taking place in uh, 2016, just a week after demonetization is announced. And the hopes and losses of people and their experiences with uh, demonetization is uh, taking place concurrently through the book. It's not um, it's not part of the narrative as such, but it is ever present. Yeah. Um, so, how did you decide to weave this in and uh, into the narrative? And um, 
and make it a point of uh, central theme in a sense. Yeah, once I started uh, walking back from uh, Gauri Langesh murder point backwards, no, uh, I, I had to reach the next milestone that is demonetization. So demonetization is something which sparked this novel. Uh, when I look back, because uh, from there onwards, uh, this uh, thought of um, uh, or this urge uh, to uh, write about uh, uh, a woman living in the current uh, political, socio-political uh, atmosphere uh, was kind of getting uh, forceful in, within me. So. Uh, during demonetization, actually, I was one of the persons who could uh, uh, travel uh, in the uh, days, those days, no, of demonetization. So, I could see for myself what happened to different uh, people in at different parts of uh, India, uh, different classes of them, um, and I have seen people, um, uh, all all sex of people, or. or across uh, the country, I, I, I know, I, I witnessed how people were suffering. So, in the end, when you look back from 2017 or you uh, consider that time span, you could easily see that, uh, that uh, um, there was something of absurdity in the whole process, no? Mm -hmm. uh, how government... Uh, implemented that and what happened to the common people and then uh, how it took shape. And personally, I believe that uh, demonetization was the first surgi surgical strike uh, on the ordinary people, you know, uh, because uh, and not only on the ordinary people, uh, but on our, uh, the whole political conscience that uh, once it was implemented, mm. it silenced us. So that was a process of silencing uh, all sorts of opposing voices. This is my personal, um, what should I say, personal uh, conviction. So this is something, uh, so I wanted to just uh, start my novel or uh, weave my story from there onwards. Uh, since I realized at that point that uh, the fiscal policies of the governments who ruled us have uh, deliberately molded our lives mm. our concepts of li our concept of life our ideas about future present everything no so uh, demonetization had to be the starting point uh, it's very interesting that you mention this that the fiscal policies of governments uh, shape our lives in various ways that we often don't acknowledge uh, but this has been a kind of a concurrent theme in all your uh, works that you make the politics the contemporary politics that is playing out in our world a part of um, the narrative in a sense yeah my personal uh, life no yeah. yeah so I just wanted to ask you about this that how important would you say is to kind of weave in what is happening in our outer world uh, into the inner world of the characters that you present um, by giving a picture of the political um, landscape of our country. Um, how important is it for you to weave this in? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that important is the right word. I would say it is organic for me because it is so natural, so organic. It's like that. Text is so. So I can't escape that. It is like that. No? So it is weaved into my personal experience, my personal outlook, personal insight also. So I can't uh, help doing that. Uh, also, what I find interesting in not just um, uh, this book, of course, in, but in um, your other works as well, is the centrality of the women characters. Um, so whether it's Satipriya in this one, her mother, they are all different shades of strong women. Uh, this is a theme that has continued, whether it was in Jezebel or in uh, Hang Woman also. So, um, and recently I was reading this interview of yours where you said that you don't want to write for feminists, you want uh, to people to become feminists. After yeah, why should I write your... for uh, people who are already feminists? They yeah. know what about what, the importance of equality, fraternity and everything, no? So, uh, so I just wanted to understand from you that how... Um, how you choose these to write about these strong women characters? How do you come upon that and, and why would you say that it's important for you to showcase them, them in such a manner? I'm really surprised, Ravsi, when people ask me this question that why I am, uh, my, my, why my works have women as the central characters. No? Uh, one thing is that uh, uh, we have been, we had been listening to so many stories about men 
uh, that all the stories had become the same. No? So if you want to write a different story, you have to write the story of the women because uh, although they constitute uh, more than half of the population of the world, uh, those are the st stories we haven't heard enough of compared to those of men. So I want to write the unheard of stories, uh, the untold stories, uh, rather than the told stories, repeating the told stories, no, already uh, uh, narrated stories. So that's one thing. And you know one thing, uh, only women have new stories. And we have women have a lot of stories. Without women, you can't weave a st good story at all. So that's one thing. And uh, maybe uh, men's stories can be uh, generalized. Uh, one man's story can be other men's story also because they all live in the that class of privileges and uh, 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 kind of acknowledgements and all. But uh, a woman's story is different from from each and every one. So there are so many unheard of stories and I want to narrate them. Uh, this has been, uh, what, uh, after uh, publishing my one of my sto short stories, I realized that uh, the, if you want to uh, uh, tell a reader a new story, you have to talk about a woman. And uh, you asked uh, how my uh, um, stories have strong women characters. Strong, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's something about that. Some that question itself tells something about our concept of both strong. See, um, these men, they have been they had been writing a lot of stories about women and men and all. No, so we have this uh, mindset. This we have this uh, concept endorsed in us uh, that uh, women cannot be strong. Then you have to realize that. Uh, the women characters we see in uh, stories and films uh, scripted by or narrated by men where all the women they wanted to see that the men wanted to see that the society wanted to see they were not real men real women so what I did was I was uh, from the beginning I really I, I uh, uh, decided to write about the real women realistic women only all the women I have seen in my life I have I have been interacting with were like strong women. I, I, I hadn't seen them uh, in many stories or films. Mm. So this is an easy way for any writer. You just look at the woman sitting in front of you and uh, write about her and she will be inevitably strong and uh, uh, very different also. So, uh, of course, it's um, I'm, as you're mentioning that now we are seeing in the contemporary um, uh, media as well as books uh, that women authors and of course, um, men written by women are being appreciated even more because of uh, some of the reasons that you're mentioning as well, because the nuance is often missing when men are writing about women. But when women are writing about men, we are kind of seeing a completely different narrative and, and that is also emerging and parts of that is also obviously uh, visible in your book as well. Um, uh, also, I want to um, ask you about how you have written in your author's note in this book about um, that the fact that this book is very personal to you and uh, the characters are close to who you are. Uh, so would you say this is your most uh, personal work till date uh, in terms of your... Most autobiographical okay. work okay. till date. I think uh, uh, the, the, this book has uh, many, many chapters from my own story. Okay. All the incidents, all the characters, all the all the experiences uh, I have narrated in this book are true. So this is a true story. So it's like a, <laughs> a paradox, but the story which is true in the sense that all the all the incidents, all the words, all the um, all the anecdotes are true, but the whole story is fiction. Okay, okay. That makes it even more interesting yeah. to read. Uh, thank you so much, Meera, for joining us on that note. Uh, it's been great uh, speaking to you and I would urge our uh, readers to please get a copy of this book and uh, you can get an insight into many things from this book, not just how um, uh, the search for truth, but also uh, how politics, fiscal policies, as Meera mentioned, inform our life and experiences and are weaved into our everyday lives. Uh, thank you so much. For thank me. you so much, Ravasti and Bhaya.